Danny Flexen here for seconds out. Delighted to be joined by recently retired but still living legend, still the king, uh, Amir King Khan. Uh, in Dubai, how, how's things going? Doing really well, you know. So I spent uh, half my time here, half my time in uh, England. Uh, obviously, I've done what I wanted to do in, in my life, uh, made my money and everything, and it's all about now just enjoying yourself, really. You know, I worked so hard all my life and it's just good to wake up in the mornings knowing that you don't have to go for a run or you don't have to train. And I put boxing behind me, so it feels very different, but it feels good at the same time. You know, well-deserved, really. I can't see you ever getting fat, though. I can't see you kind of letting yourself go too much. I can't because, luckily, doing all the TV shows, like I've got the TV show Meet the Cons, I've got other TV shows I'm doing. I need to keep in fit, fit shape, you know what I mean? I need to stay a little bit. No, I can't go over, 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 oh, I go get fat, literally. So I have to make sure that I'm always in shape, always looking good. And the, plus the wife won't let me get fat. She'll be like, listen, <laughs> you might get a little. I might be back in training camp soon if I, if I end up putting some weight on, she'll be like, look, get back out there. Good stuff. Um, what are you actually doing out in Dubai? I know you're enjoying yourself, but what are you doing from yeah. a work perspective as well? Because I know you obviously bumped into yeah. Usyk yesterday. So basically I won the whole, uh, whole of the Middle East uh, with WBC, uh, the World Boxing Council. So all the big events that happen in the in the like region of the Middle East, I look after, I make sure all the events are being, they have the right judges there. Uh, and, you know, overlooking everything and have a team under me as well who, uh, who look carefully at how events are being put out. Are the judges okay? Are the referees okay? Are they got the affiliation? Have they got the... So we kind of sign it off. Got it. So that keeps me busy as well at the same time. Plus, just retired life, really, you know, getting to enjoy myself, buying nice cars <laughs> and stuff like that, just kind of treating myself, really, because in my boxing career, I never really treated myself. I was always training, always always in training camps, always fighting. But now the time where I can now enjoy a little bit of that time and spend quality time with the kids as well, you know, they go to school here. Uh, and also then take them to the water parks, take them to um, take them to the play areas and stuff like that. Try to give them a good time that, you know, maybe, I mean, I didn't, we didn't get that, that much of a good time when we were young kids. I mean, we did get good time, but not as much as our kids again. They are a little bit spoiled, but making sure that they're still very disciplined, you know. So no you, no disrespect to Bolton, Bolton, but it's not Dubai, is it? <laughs> I mean... Big difference, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, just, yeah, just a, a big, just a little bit. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 lovely here, though. Honestly, it's a it's a nice, nice place to kind of start you start a family uh, and bring them up. It's like what happened in London to me when I had a gunpoint, uh, gun gunpoint at me, and they took my watch. Um, so is that kind of give me that fear of you know coming back to UK? Things like that can happen. You're always a target, aren't you? So. They've been arrested now, said, haven't they? I think I read. Yeah, they've got all got arrested, and now they want me to come back and make sure I'm at court on in court for when they get the trip and the trial starts. You know, that's just headache. All this, you know, I just want to be left alone and be normal. You know what I mean? But now I have to go there and I have to face the people. Hope I don't know if I'm going to recognize us any of them or do I? Do I, how, I mean, it'd be good to know how it all come about and why it happened to me. You know, but yeah. Now, I saw the pictures yesterday that you sent out to you and Usyk in camp. He's training in Dubai for the Joshua yeah. rematch. Very great, you know, great pictures. We're going to attach one of them to this video. Just tell us um, how that came about. How did you end up crossing paths? <clears throat> so Usyk is um, he's training at my friends. Um, I'll just move it up here. Just to be quiet. The little ones. But yeah, Usyk is training... Uzik's training at my friend's um, uh, at my friend's gym. Uh, my friend's got like a car show room, a huge showroom. It's called the Space, and he said to me, "Look, um, come down. Uzik's training. It'll be nice. I've I've been well. Uzik's been sending me some videos because I've been saying I'm gonna come, and I've not been able to go there. It's been he trained quite early in the morning, and every time I I get a message from Uzik himself saying." Amir, where are you? And I'll send you the videos. It's quite funny when he sends them because he's got that, he's got that, he's got that, you know, that scary voice. He goes, hey, kid, where are you? Hey, kid, where are you?
And I've let him down twice before, so I thought the third time I can't let him down. So I went there and we um we we had a good chat. I mean, such a nice guy, honestly, like such so humble. So he was training and he 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 keep looking at the ring, making sure I'm watching. And um and and you know, we be then after he finished his training session, um he looked in great shape, by the way. You know, he looked very strong, looks a lot bigger. I mean, he was telling me that he put on an extra 15 kilos since he's last um, fought AJ. Wow. So you see how much strength he's going to have. And I mean, he looks like a full-on blown up. No, not blown up, like a full-on natural heavyweight, really. You know, he looks, he is big and looks very, very strong. Um, Obviously, I didn't want to uh, ask a prediction on what he thinks, how the fight's going to go, but he's very confident. And... um, um he still wants to remain world champion. Uh, but he did say one thing that no one saw, no one seen me at my best yet, which I can probably believe that because I don't think we have. I think every fight he's ever had, I think he's kind of just kind of got through it quite easily, really. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. We've never seen him dig deep in fighting this, uh, dig deep in the trenches and start fighting because uh, I think we'll see a different Uzik, you know, if this one ever put that, puts that pressure on him. Um, but look, he seemed very confident, and um, he said his next week is going to be going to Saudi, um, and he's going to be settled over there. He asked me if I was going to be there, um, which I will be. I will be there. Sorry, I'm only I'm a very close flight. Like it's not only an hour flight, so yeah, we'll be there. But like, say, yeah, he asked me who are you supporting. Obviously, I said, look, AJ is being from AJ being from England, uh, you being from Ukraine. You're a friend of mine as well. Uh, I know. An, Uzik, when I was in the World Championships, he also knows the guy who I beat, Kotelnik, who was also for for world title. I said it's a 50-50 fight. I'm not sitting on I'm not sitting on anyone's corner. I'm just gonna sit there. As a, look, I'm a, I'm a retired fighter now, and I'm a I'm a boxing fan, so I'm gonna sit there as a fan and support the fight because I think it's a, it's gonna be a brilliant one. But uh, look, I think it can go 50-50 because. It is a 50 55. The reason why is because you got AJ with the power. I'm sure AJ is going to learn from the mistakes in the first fight, which you always do, you know, when they rematch, uh, which I never really had a rematch with anyone. Mm. One was going to happen when I was going to fight against Lamont Peterson, but I got called off. But when you fight a rematch, you know, you know exactly what to expect in that fight. You know what the person does, what he does right, what he does, what, how, to, how to beat him, how to, um, how to break him down, and what not to do in the fight what you did in the first fight that you got caught with. So I think we're age. So the rematch, so I think, you know, it's it's a rematch between two fighters where they know exactly what to expect from each other. Um it was like when I was fighting against Lamont Peterson, mm. uh the rematch, which never happened, obviously he was caught tested positive, but um I knew what to expect this fight, how he's gonna come forward, how he's gonna try to put brush his head in, use his head, uh and also uh you know he's a late starter. So I had to make sure that I conserve my energy. So same with AJ now and also with Uzik. They know how to, they know what to expect in this fight. They have to be one step ahead. AJ's got that long jab. He's got the long shots, that strong backhand, right hand. He's got a great uppercut. So I'm sure Uzik will be working on them things. And with Uzik, he's just a great boxer. I mean, he's a he, he makes you miss a comeback. He's a great counterfighter, you know, and he hits hard as well. So it's going to be like a game of chess. I can't see this one going... Going gonna, it's not gonna be like a war. Um, it's not gonna be a war. I think it'll be more like a game of chess than it's gonna be. Um, it's gonna be a very technical fight. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think it will again go the distance, or it could be an early knockout for someone. Depends whoever gets caught early could go because we know that Age has got the power to knock out Uzik if he hits him clean, and we know that Uzik hurt Age in his last fight. So after him putting some weight on and getting getting bigger for this fight I think he he could maybe look for the knockout as well Did your view yeah. on how the fight's going to pan out change once you saw Usyk in camp yeah. yesterday Yeah oh, um, I mean watching him train um, he does look very focused and like he, he's he look he's in Dubai he's very isolated no one knows he's in Dubai he's been here for a couple of weeks but that just shows if you're in a place like Dubai and it is very hard to be isolated, you go, you might go for a walk, you might have people recognising you and stuff like that. 
So credit to him there where, you know, no one knows where he is. He's still isolated in a place like Dubai where there's so much distraction. So credit to him there. Um, the way I looked at him in the training and yesterday, he looks more than ready. I think he's, he looks like he's in the best shape he's ever been in. Um, he said, that's what he said as well. He is in the best shape he's ever been in. He looks strong. It's not like, he, he didn't look like, he did, he nowhere near looked like a cruiserweight. He looked like a nice, full, blown up, uh, like blown out heavyweight. Like he was strong at the weight, you know, when he was hitting the pads and stuff. Um, and you can see like the definition on his body and stuff like that. He's very thick, and you can see his uh, his, his his solid muscle he's got. So, um, yeah, I think I like I mean, I'm sure he's going to be ready. This is he said he never he doesn't want to lose his world titles, and um, he uh, he wants to go for more after this. So, good stuff. Now, something else I wanted to ask you about before I let you go. I'm sure you saw last night. Uh, it was confirmed that Conor Ben and Chris Eubank yeah. Jr. will be fighting the sons of. Legends, not really considered to be a, a likely prospect to, until the last few months because they're such different weights. But apparently they're meeting at a catch weight. What What do you make of that fight? Are you excited? You know that's a that's a very good fight for a UK domestic fight. I think it's one of the biggest domestic fights that we're gonna have for a very very long time. And thirty years has been since the last the parents fought. So now we're having the youngins fight each other. It makes a great storyline. First of all. Um, I, I look. It's that catch weight. Is it what's that? One sixty. They haven't confirmed it, but I think it's between one fifty six and one fifty eight. So I mean, I think that favors. And then, is there any hydration clause in there? There's. It's been reported previously that there was going to be, but it hasn't. They don't mention it in the press release. Yeah. So I imagine. Yeah. Wouldn't. So I mean, it just depends on that. But uh, look. Everyone goes for the bigger man first. I mean, the bigger man is a stronger man and he's the guy who's going to... He's more used to being heavy and he can hit harder, naturally, stronger guy, which is Eubank. Uh, but then Ben, obviously, has showed a lot of power in his early fights and, and and he does look very big for the weight. It looks naturally like like he's put the weight on quite well. You know, sometimes I think, you know, when you put weight on like that... Um, it's very hard to lose that weight again and come back down again. Mm. And I just feel like with Ben being, he's still young and, and putting that muscle on, I think it might be hard for him to get back down to weight again. He might have to then campaign at 154 because going down to 147 where he wanted to make win a world title, you know, might be very hard. Um, look, I think for him, it's a great business um, fight because at the end of the day, it make good money and also it's a fight. It's a fight which I think Look, I'm gonna probably lean more again, more towards uh, Eubank because he's the heavier guy. But then again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, Ben is gonna is is gonna get beaten. I think Ben has the chance as well. You know, he's got that, he's got, he's got that good boxing style. He might want to rough him up, and you know, you never know. I mean, him having that extra bit of weight might give him that extra bit of strength as well. So. I don't know, man. It's a hard fight to call, but I do lead more towards Eubank. How close were you at any point, and it might be not at all, to fighting Conor Ben? Like, were you ever seriously approached about that fight? Never. Because I know they never. talked about I, mean, I know Eddie Eddie mentioned it a couple mm. of times, but never was, you know, never was. Um, look, the, no, never, never was. And we met. I know there was talks about it, like there were names flying around, and I think Connor said as well that yeah, I'll fight. I mean, said, but never was a time where we were gonna fight each other. Um, but I mean, I think it would have been a brilliant fight. I mean, I'm me and my peak, and Connor Ben at his peak as well would have been a would have been a brilliant fight. Yeah. And you talked about the difficulty in coming back down, having put on such a lot of muscle mass. Did you ever struggle with that after the Canelo fight? I know you didn't go up quite as high as he, he'll be going up, but coming back down to 147. Um, yeah, you do. You do You do kind of find it a little bit hard, yeah. Because your body, you're still adding a little bit of muscle on and to burn muscle, it takes a lot of time, you know. And it's a lot harder. So then I totally changed my whole training camp to more cardio so I can start burning muscle. And the whole camp then, after that was kind of burn all that muscle and then get back down to 147 and then after that I think I've burned that much muscle that I've never been able to put it back on again you know what I mean so 
<laughs> but um, it is harder when you go up a weight and you get, you get used to a natural weight. It's like now, when I was 147, imagine me going down to 140 again. Impossible. So I think that's what's going to happen with Connor. I think he's going to end up putting muscle on and strength. That it may be too hard for him to go back down to 147. Really, really appreciate the insight, mate. And it's great to catch up. You seem like you're in a great place. Not literally, the Thank Bible it is, but just a great place yeah. <laughs> mentally and emotionally. Yeah, was, uh, nice, nice pool, chilling out. Weather's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, same, same. You can't see my hand here in Kent, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, oh, I'm glad you're happy and everything's going well. And, yeah, let's do this more often because I think you've got a lot yeah, to say. Whenever, and whenever, to whenever you need me, just send me a message, man. I'm, I'm happy to do it anytime. Will do. Brilliant, mate. All right, right take care. Yeah, God bless.